Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mass Retirees Weekly Update. Today's Friday, December 23rd. I'm Sean Duhamel. Thank you so much for joining with us again and tuning in this week. Now this will be our last weekly update for 2022. We will be back the first Friday of January, Friday, January 6th, with a fresh update, fresh outlook of what we can expect coming our way in 2023, and we're gonna hit the ground running. Now, before I recap the news of the year and some of the highlights and, and talking about some of the things that we've accomplished and what we're looking forward to as we begin the new year, let me first address what Frank Valeri reported on a few days ago, and that's that unfortunately our efforts, both here in Massachusetts as well as around the country, collectively to either reform the windfall elimination provision or fully repeal both the WEP and the GPO, Unfortunately, this congressional session once again is going to come to a close without any resolution on these issues. Um, Congressman Richie Neal and Congressman Kevin Brady, unfortunately, were unable to reach an agreement on a bipartisan compromise that would have seen a reform of the windfall law potentially pass both through the House as well as the U.S. Senate during the current congressional session. Now, it goes without saying that we are tremendously disappointed in the fact that this couldn't get done yet in another congressional session. Uh, we put a lot of hope and faith into Mr. Brady and Mr. Neal being able to come together. Um, they did agree on the base problem that the windfall elimination provision is inherently unfair and needs to change. Unfortunately, they could not reach an agreement on how to pay for those changes and they were not able to overcome the ideological differences um, from, from both of their approaches. Now again, this is a tremendous heartbreaking disappointment for the 85,000 public retirees here in Massachusetts and the roughly 2 million retirees across the country who have seen their social security benefit, their own personal social security benefit um, be reduced dramatically by hundreds of dollars a month um, because of the windfall law. Now, Going forward, we're going to have a lot to say on this issue. Um, we're going to have to readdress our approach and we're going to continue to work with our national partners to find a way to move forward to bring some relief to retirees. At the same time, our hope is that the way things ended this year will also serve as, as a bit of a, a reality check or a wake up call to those organizations and those individuals who have taken an all or nothing position when it comes to fully repealing the weapon, the GPO. Um, as we have reported and as we have stated repeatedly, we do not believe that there is a viable, realistic path forward to fully repealing weapon GPO anytime in the foreseeable future. So where that leaves us is quite simple. We need to find a way to move forward, to compromise, to pass legislation that will provide some relief to retirees while we continue to work on the bigger picture of completely removing these two laws um, fr from the, the, the Social Security calculations. That's our goal, but it's gonna take a while to get there. But I don't wanna leave the end of this year without recapping some of the successes we have had, particularly here in Massachusetts. Now, thankfully, we have a state legislature, a state government, um, our constitutional officers, the majority of cities and towns across the state who want to work together to better the lives of public retirees. And the success that we have had this year in 2022 really speaks to that fact. Um, we set out the year with the goal of uh, attaining better COLA benefits, and we have certainly done that. Um, we're not anywhere near finished. We have a lot of work still to do, and, and we're looking forward to the coming year and some further improvements we can make to the COLA. But the legislature and our local officials, our local retirement board officials have really stepped up this year, made improvements to the COLA. We have approximately 40 local systems that have voted to increase the COLA base going forward. So that's a tremendous step in the right direction. Right now, we know that we have scores of local retirement boards and local governments working together to increase the local COLA from the 3% that was in, passed back in July up to the full 5% that was authorized by the legislature. The governor 
uh, signed that legislation into law um, a little bit over a month ago, and we already have had some reports, such as the town of Plymouth, where I'm from, um, and I served on the retirement board. I'm very proud of my, my former colleagues in Plymouth for really leading the charge on this issue and being the first system to approve the 5% COLA, as well as have the Board of Selectmen also approve the 5% COLA. And Plymouth retirees should be seeing that increase in their checks in the very near future, um, potentially even as early as this month. But we're gonna continue to work with our local colleagues all across the Commonwealth um, to continue to make improvements to the local COLA, while at the same time <clears throat> working with the state legislature the incoming Healy administration, State Treasurer Deb Goldberg, incoming State Auditor Diana DeZoglio, to find a way to move forward to increase the state and teacher retiree COLA base, hopefully to a level of $16,000. Now, that's the main focus in terms of your pension and the cost of living increase. But there's also a lot of good news and things that we can be proud about in terms of your health insurance because these issues really go hand in hand. As we've always said, it doesn't do you any good if you're getting a COLA increase at the same time that you're seeing astronomical increases in your healthcare costs. Now, thankfully, premiums across the state have been relatively stable for a considerable amount of time now. At the state level, co-payments and deductibles have not increased over the past five years. Now, unfortunately, we do know that all across the country, medical inflation is once again on the rise. And there's only so much that can be done uh, to head that off or to control that. But the good news is that here in Massachusetts, both the state GIC, as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield, and the other health insurance companies that are operating at the municipal level have done a fantastic job of keeping those types of cost increases under control here in Massachusetts. And we are far below both the national average as well as the statewide private sector average in terms of medical inflation and the result that that has <clears throat> on increased premiums as well as out-of-pocket out of costs. Now, at the same time, we're also very encouraged by the recent news that we've been um, hearing from the GIC. As we have reported throughout this year, the GIC has been engaged in the procurement process that comes about every five years. Back in October, they announced which health insurance plans will be retained and contracted with going forward. Just a couple of weeks ago, or just a week ago as a matter of fact, the GIC announced the selection of a pharmacy benefits manager, which is CVS Health is the pharmacy benefits manager for both Medicare as well as non-Medicare retirees and active employees starting this coming July 1st. Now we believe that these are, are good indications and good news for both active and retired public employees, that there, we are not anticipating any wild changes in your health insurance benefits. And we're very hopeful that once we get into the new year and the GIC makes its plan design recommendations in January, followed by a vote in February, and finally in early March, the monthly premiums will be determined. We are very hopeful that the cost increases or changes in your benefits will be minimum um, at most. And as we have continued to say, the decisions made at the state level can very quickly become local policy as well. So if things are going well, health insurance wise for retirees at the state level, more likely than not, then things will continue to go well at the local level. But we need to be vigilant. And again, we know that these costs are going up and we know that if a recession sets in, um, which is possible in the coming year, that some governmental officials, particularly at the local level, may look to, to cutbacks in terms of health insurance benefits as a way to try to balance their budget. So we need to be very vigilant. Which brings me to my final point. We are very much looking forward to and are very encouraged by both the legislative leadership who will be returning to office on January 4th when they're sworn in on Beacon Hill, as well as the incoming governor and lieutenant governor, um, state auditor, attorney general, and of course our good friend Deb Goldberg is returning as state treasurer, and our good friend Bill Galvin will be returning as secretary of state. We have a set of, of state leaders and legislative leaders who 
we know we can work with, we've worked with in the past, and each of these individuals has a personal track record of supporting you and supporting the issues that are most important to you as a public retiree. So while there is no such thing as a blank check or, or a guarantee that we're gonna get everything under the sun that we're looking for, and that's certainly not our expectation, uh, we do know that these are folks that we can work with who are not setting out to try to make cuts and make changes and hurt public retirees. And with any luck, um, we can actually improve benefits, whether it be the COLA, basic life insurance, veterans bonus, finding a pathway forward for our non-Medicare eligible retirees uh, to lower their health insurance costs, potentially by um, participating in Medicare with the state paying any, any penalties or increased costs. And finally, we are very excited to be able to resume our local area meetings throughout Massachusetts, as well as getting back down um, to Florida's East Coast uh, on February 1st. We'll be back in Pompano Beach. We have thousands of members who live in Florida year round, um, thousands more who travel to Florida as snowbirds every winter. And then just here in Massachusetts, traditionally would have 15 or 16 meetings spread throughout the state in any given year. We really haven't been able to do that because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, but we are comfortable getting back out there again, and I think our members are comfortable um, if you choose to of, of coming to these meetings. So we're really looking forward to seeing you face to face. We're going to continue to hold our virtual Teletown Hall events. The next scheduled Teletown Hall, of course, is on Friday, January 20th. That will feature the GIC, and I'm, I'm thrilled that our friend Matt Vino will be joining us to answer your questions and hear directly from our members in terms of your health insurance benefits. But with that, I'm gonna sign off for the year. Thank you so much for your support of our association. It is a privilege and an honor to represent you and work for you. I wanna wish all of you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and please have a safe, healthy, happy, and peaceful new year to come. And with any luck, um, we're gonna be better off in a year from now than we are today, and I think we're in pretty good shape. So with that again, be well, and we will be back to you in the new year. Bye-bye, everybody.